hi everyone so last week i did a video um and i was talking about the three things that i've been learning throughout parenting and in one of the lessons or one of the lessons were to parent my child my child myself that i should not let the world parent my child and how do i do that is by ensuring that you know i don't allow him i have a five month old baby i don't expose him too early to the screens internet cartoons and all that but i if you have not watched that video i'll pin it up here and the link is also in my description um you can go watch that but i also discovered that one of the reasons by the way shout out to every mom who has a two and a two kids situation because how do you do that how like <laughs> having a, a newborn baby is already like you know so i was imagining for you know having a baby a newborn and you have a toddler who is also waiting for you to parent them and you have not even you know it, it's it's a lot so shout out to you if you are parenting two under two or three under three or you have twins because i don't know how you do it shout out to you may the lord bless women <laughs> and no parents involved amen so I, I want to share with you in this video because i discovered that one of the reasons why we give our children or we distract them with um the screens we entertain them with cartoons and all that is because we have not trained them to be independent so my five month old turning six next week i trained him how to sleep on his own when he was around two months and let me tell you it blessed us it blessed us it blessed my husband and i it blessed him also because when you have a well-rested baby a well-rested baby equals to a no fussy baby so the reasons why we will distract them with all those things is because we don't know what to do with them when they cry we don't know what to give them what to do you know you have fed this baby he is clean he is you know you, you his diapers are, are okay you don't know what to do with him when he is crying and you've done all things that are possible to do and you don't know what to do you don't know what else to give them so one of the things that you can do for your child is to train them how to sleep if you give if you train them how to sleep on their own like he can put himself to sleep mama you are going to have a very smooth okay let me not say smooth because sometimes it's not that easy but it is easier than not training them because honestly the condition in the womb or the environment in the womb is not the same as when he is born so the environment has changed and he doesn't know how to adjust so helping your baby adjust to the environment slowly gradually will help him to feel safe to sleep on his own and i before i started training my child because let me tell you it, it, training him is not easy but training him is the best gift you can give him when he is a newborn i'm telling you is the best gift because your baby will be able to sleep um for long hours and when he is able to sleep for long hours they are able to rest well and when they wake up they have that smile on their faces it always takes me out you know and he is well rested he is happy he is jovial he's bubbly and when he is tired you do the same thing he goes to sleep let me tell you you will have an easy time not to say that it will be all smooth every day all through but I'm telling you it will be very very it will bless you so for the new moms and also for the people that are preparing pretty hello for the people that are preparing and you know the the girls that are nearing that phase of life 
this will bless you so let's get right to it so one of the things that you need to do is is to ensure that the environment is right what do i mean by that when this baby was still in the womb there was an environment that was conducive for him and he was he was already familiar with that environment so it was that's the environment he's been introduced to so when he is born adjusting to a different environment is not easy that's why they will fight you they will cry they don't know what to do with themselves they have they are not used to this okay they are not used to this light glaring light it's, it's in the womb is dark it is safe meaning he is somewhere enclosed you know like this you see the way they they look like when they're in the womb um he's not just sleeping with his arms open and his feet just freestyle no just the same way when you want to sleep you don't go to you don't lie down on the floor and you just sleep like that for you to be able to sleep well you will go to the bed which is a safe environment it will you will make sure that you have something on even if it's hot you want to make sure that you have something on right and then so the same way you want to make sure that the baby feels safe feels warm and you replicate the same environment that was in the womb here because he's not used to this environment so one of the things that i used to do okay for my baby i didn't sleep train him when immediately after he was born because at that time you're so mesmerized you your heart is dying you are so in love with this little human being so you spoil them you hold them when they want to sleep they're just sleeping on your arms you know and all that the danger with that is that they will get used to that they will get used to that comfort whenever they want to sleep they want to feel comfortable they want to feel you making them feel comfortable so when you hold them or you nurse them to sleep they will be dependent on you anytime that they want to sleep so the idea of sleep training training is to help your baby sleep on their own such that they are not dependent on you they're not dependent on anything else for them to be uh to fall asleep so you make sure you have created an environment the same environment environment that was in the womb one is darkness the room must be dark in sleep training if you're not sleep training you do your thing place them on the seat or anywhere else but if you're sleep training the room must be dark because you're replicating the dark environment in the womb the second thing is that they need to feel safe so that means swaddling so i never used to do a full swaddle just a half swaddle when his um his hands are out because i i didn't um i didn't he was not used to being swaddled right after or immediately after he was born so swaddling him one month later was not easy so he used to fight swaddling so but i used to make sure that i wrap him very well and he is feeling safe he's not just sleeping anyhow in any way so safe warm he is fed his diapers are clean okay so when you have made sure that all those things are done actually i can put a list here of the things that you need to do all those things are done then it's time for training especially if he is not used to it the first two weeks are not going to be easy because for him to be able to adapt to that new system if he was not used to the system actually the best thing to do is to train your child immediately is born when you feed that baby put him down don't hold him for hours i know at that stage you want to just you know watch him look at him and all that don't if you do that it's going to be very easy for you to train him how to sleep on his own because you're making him familiar to um uh, you comforting him every time so when you're not holding him he will always fight he will always cry so making sure that you have all those things done and then you put him down 
of course when i put him down for the first time the first day for the first nap in his training he was i'm telling you he, he is screaming he is crying he is helplessly crying he needs you but the training says or demands that you don't pick him up so what you do of course it's not going to be easy but sometimes i used to in those two weeks of training i used to put him down and he's crying and i start crying because i don't want to pick him up the, the thing is if you pick him up it's like you're taking him one step backwards this training needs consistency if you're not a consistent person if you're not tolerant if you have if you have a very easy <laughs> and light heart you won't be able to do it you need to be a very tolerant person and you also need to be very consistent every time you put him down for a nap after that one hour if he is less than three months then make sure that you're doing the same thing so what do you do you put him down he is crying he doesn't know what to do he is calling he is shouting he is screaming you wait for you can wait for one minute after one minute you let him cry imagine let your baby cry and imagine they will be fine he will be just fine the appearance that are and i was like that i was a helicopter mom i didn't want to hear my son cry so every time i hear him make a sound i am there and i'm picking him up to console him and to comfort him but no allow your baby to cry of course you won't let them cry the whole day but they will be just fine so for one minute allow him to cry go in there if you have a sound machine the better so the sound machine is producing a shh sound but if you don't have a sound machine go in there pat him on the back and produce that sound so you're patting him and you're shh for two minutes even if he doesn't stop crying after two minutes you leave him walk out of the room allow him cry three minutes progressively go back pat him for like four minutes shh, as you're patting him the same routine the same every time he wants to nap you repeat the same routine okay don't break that routine every time he wants to nap don't start holding him rocking him nursing him because if you do that those things you're taking him backwards he won't be able to learn so every time you're doing that it won't be easy because he will be fighting he doesn't know this new routine and system that you're putting him on but allow him allow him to learn training is not easy training for anything is not easy okay allow him to learn give him time to run to oh give him time to learn okay give him um room be patient with him he won't he will frustrate you he will disappoint you because sometimes you will feel like when he was uh one week in the training i wasn't seeing the result i wasn't seeing him um we were still fighting we were still so frustrated we were still and at this point let me say that if your baby does not sleep well during the day he will not be able to sleep well during the night there are people who will say that they want their baby to stay awake during the day and then because you want them to sleep during the night no it doesn't happen like that if they don't sleep during the day he won't sleep during the night unless again i'm giving a disclaimer unless again your baby is a miracle baby or some baby who just sleeps but for the rest of us the majority of us those babies won't sleep well if they don't sleep during the day so you want to make sure that you're training him during the day so that in the during the night it, it will be very easy for him so you put him down after one minute you go shushu for two minutes and you pat him down and you're patting him at the back even if he doesn't sleep 
and is still crying, walk out of the room. Uh, time you can put a timer on after two minutes. Go back in, shushu, pat. After three minutes, go back out. <laughs> okay. After like that, if at thirty minutes he's still not yet asleep, then you can pick him up and comfort him. But next time you want to put him down on a nap after that one hour, if he is uh, three months and below, you will make sure to do the same thing. Be consistent in that routine. Now, um, the more he is growing, like when he is four months old, um, his awake time or his awake period begins to extend to two hours or even maybe two and a half hours. Okay, so um, after two hours and a half, or after even two hours, or even after one hour, you just need to see there are sleeping cues that you need to look out for. And I'll give you the sleeping cues after I'm done with this. So when you see that your baby is sleeping, anytime, even if it's after one hour and he needs to sleep, you go back, do the same thing wrap him nicely he is fed he is clean his diapers are not wet and the environment is safe conducive for him to sleep put him down five minutes later 10 minutes later uh -huh, 20 minutes later if it's at 30 minutes he's not yet asleep now you can comfort him but the next nap you do the same i'm telling you after two weeks your baby will have learned how to sleep on their own and this training is not just to, to help them sleep on their own. I realized that he, um, he became more independent. That you don't need to hold him for, for when he's awake in that one hour. You don't need to hold him all throughout the one hour. He is independent. He's already knew how to uh, stay on his own. Like he can lie on the seat and he is fine. He's comfortable provided he is uh fed and you're talking to him you're singing to him so you don't need to he becomes more independent and shout out to alice alisa sherry photography because that girl when i was training my baby it wasn't easy so i called her one day and i was like oh my god i want to do this but that was one week later in the training and i was so frustrated i didn't know what to do and she told me let me tell you girl you need to do that for your baby. You're teaching him to be independent. You, that's a life skill. You are gifting him. That's a gift you're giving to your baby. <laughs> that's the first gift you give to your baby. Teach him how to sleep on his own. Teach him how to be independent. The sleeping cues. So after one hour, three to zero to three months old baby after one hour you begin to see them rubbing their eyes or rubbing their nose or yawning uh which other sleeping cues there is or they're staring at the air or they're just staring they're not looking at you they're not looking at anything they're just staring that will mean that they are already tired so if you see those sleeping cues make sure that you Put your baby to sleep don't wait until your baby is overtired if you extend that period it will mean that it will be very difficult for your baby to sleep i gave you an example if you stay awake for a long time if you transnight and and even the, the following day you're still you're still awake you're going to find a hard time you're going to have a hard time falling asleep yourself so for a baby, one hour is enough. One hour is enough for them to be tired. Okay? And I realized that um, putting him on a schedule is very important because even when he is awake, the schedule that I used to use was sleep, play. No, sleep, eat, play. Immediately after his nap, he can take a, a nap of around one hour to, to three hours yes he used to sleep for three hours and at that time i'm forgetting i even have a <laughs> okay okay you can't forget but three hours for a new mom a first time mom is is a lot of time for you to nap for you to take care of yourself for you to chat with your husband and for you to just 
you know be yourself for just three hours without the baby but if you don't sleep train them if they are used to sleeping on your hands even if you put them down they'll be asleep for 30 minutes or 45 minutes and they wake up okay so that's what I did for my son for our son and as I said it blessed us it blessed us because he was able to for details and all that baby psychology and baby development and all that you can google i google it i go i used to google i'm a google mom <laughs> you know nowadays they want to label that google mom as a bad thing it's not a bad thing the information is there okay the information is there if it is help let me tell you it helped us it helped me okay so google do youtube listen to pediatricians online and all that and you will be blessed as we were so that has been our experience he is now five months he still sleeps on his own and he for five months he sleeps around five hours during the day and then during the night he sleeps all night his nap uh, his nap time uh, sleeps ranges to right now he ranges to 30 minutes to two hours or three hours and that is because of his developmental um as he's developing as his brain is developing as he is growing he begins to extend his his awake time and then during the night he is sleeping all through i can tell you that he only wakes up one or two three times to feed and if I have fed him well during the day, he will only wake up once to feed. If you do it, it will be very helpful. It will be very helpful for you and for your baby. That way you will not need to um, do a lot of work. You, would, you will not need to do a lot of entertaining for that child to be able to comfort him and to be able to make sure that he is, he is okay. Because during his awake time, we sing, we talk, we, you know, uh, we dance and all that. We do tummy time. You can Google all those things. <laughs> you can Google what to do with your two months baby or three months or five months baby when he's awake. What are the activities that you can engage with him? So Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6, it says, Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. Train your child. Don't leave the world to train your child. In Kiswahili, there's a, there's a methali that says, Asiefunzo na mamae, anafunzo na ulimwengu. Train your child. They will not embarrass you. They will not misrepresent you or misrepresent Jesus when they are out there. I'm just preparing you if you're not yet there or if you are already there and you have been wondering what to do you have been having a difficult time with your baby i hope this is helpful to you i hope i have shed light inspired you i am not a know-it-all as i said you can google you can find information online that can help your child do what is comfortable with your child because all children all kids are not the same thank you so much for subscribing if you're new kindly hit that subscribe button and i will see you next